new videos every day. Okay, I'm John Breeding, and it's Friday, September 5th, 2008, here in Austin, Texas. The last video I did was on autism and such, and at that time I wanted to, I said I'd do a follow-up on the infamous School of Shock, the Judge Rotenberg Center, and that's what I want to do today. The place is located in Canton, Massachusetts. It's a place of notoriety and infamy. In 2007, Jennifer Gonnerman wrote an article in Mother Jones magazine. You can go to motherjones.com and pull it up along with all kinds of other files and uh, reviews of that center and stuff like that for background. But I just want to lay this out and in reviewing it a little bit, I have to tell you it, it's very troubling and saddening and maddening uh, that this kind of thing goes on in the world and specifically in the United States. There's 234 current residents according to Gonerman and half of them are wired to receive electroshocks, not like electroconvulsive treatment, but a skin applied shock that's severe enough to cause bad pain. Some of those kids are as young as 9 and 10 years old. The Rotenberg Center is the only facility in the country that disciplines students by shocking them. A form of punishment not inflicted on serial killers or child molesters or whoever in the United States. So I want to talk about that. She says the Rotenberg Center has long been known as the school of last resort, a place that will take any kid no matter how extreme. It's interesting to talk about the school of last resort because we talk about electroshock, electroconvulsive treatment as being the treatment of last resort after the psychiatric drugs. So this is the school of last resort interesting thing is that one of the things that they're proud of is that they don't use any psychiatric drugs, which sounds like that would make them a real ally of ours and of mine, since I'm so strongly against the use of psychiatric drugs with children. It's kind of strange. But what they do is use all kinds of so-called aversive negative punishment techniques, including electric shock, <laughs> including restraint, including food deprivation, including sensory deprivation, including sensory bombardment. One reason why this place hasn't been shut down is because there's a cadre of parents of children who are suffering these techniques, who strongly defend the school and justify their actions. Here's one, Margaret Familaire, whose son Michael was there for a while for autism and renal retardation. Nowadays, when he comes home for a visit, Marguerite carries her shock, his shock activator in her purse. All she has to do, she says, is show it to him. He'll automatically comply to whatever my signal command may be, whether it's put on your seatbelt, hand me that apple, or sit appropriately and eat your food. It's made a human being, a civilized human being out of him. That's pathetic. It's controlled him. That's not what I call a civilized human being. That's not what I call a human being with dignity and respect and free will and autonomy and choice. That's called a controlled, terrorized being. So Massachusetts officials have tried to shut this place down more than once, but parents keep coming to the defense. We'll hear more about that later. It's interesting to look at the guy who founded this place and runs it. His name's Matt Israel. He was a Harvard freshman back in 1950, became fascinated with the dean of Harvard psychology, the famous behaviorist Fred Skinner. 
one of Skinner's books was called Beyond Freedom and Dignity. Israel got fascinated with him, decided he wanted to create a utopia. And his utopia involves using these punishment techniques on children to control them and get them to behave properly. Very sad. Israel started with his roommate's three-year-old child who wasn't behaving well, according to Israel. When she misbehaved, he punished her by snapping his finger against her cheek and found that instead of being annoyed, she became a charming addition to the house. You think children are meant to be controlled by being slapped around and pinched and shocked? Or that they're free beings, spiritual beings, who we have to learn to live with? He went on to develop a bunch of techniques, spraying kids in the face with water, shoving ammonia under their noses, pinching the soles of their feet, smacking them with a spatula, etc. A white noise helmet filled with static. He got in big trouble in California, but left there and started this place in Massachusetts. They use this thing called a GED. It's basically an electric shock device. And it's quite powerful and painful when it's applied. How did the staff get along with this? When I wrote about electroshock, I talked about this concept of Blutkit. German, right? Learned it from Dostoevsky. It means blood cement. The idea was that, according to Dostoevsky, you get four members of a group to do in a fifth and they become bonded forever by blood cement. This reporter met one of the former teachers of this school who's quoted to say, the first time you give someone a GED, that's an electroshock, is the worst one. You don't want to hurt somebody, you want to help, you're thinking this has got to be okay, this has got to be legal, or they wouldn't be doing this. So the first one you do is terrible, but then you've done it you got to justify that and become a part of this group. It's like my videos on the Nazi doctors where they had to learn this process of selection and killing and gradually learn to justify that. Blood cement. It's very sad. Besides that, staff aren't generally allowed to talk to each other. They're monitored with surveillance cameras, etc. Let's look at some of this. This is one of the files that you'll actually find on the Mother Jones website when you look up School of Shock article. Uh, there was an intensive review done uh, on the Judge Roddenberg Center in 1976. This place is largely, it's basically taxpayer funded. It's, it's mostly kids from New York that the city, then, that the state then pays $200,000 plus a year to the Roddenberg Center to house those kids over there in Massachusetts. So they did a review. A sample of 12 New York State students were selected for review from the 71 receiving aversive stimuli interventions. That included electroshock, food contingent programs, and manual and mechanical restraints. And here's some of their findings. Rottenberg Center employs a general use of level three aversives. That's the shock, the food deprivation, the restraints. To students with a wide, broad range of disabilities, many without a clear history of self-injurious behavior. See, the argument is that this is for the serious self-injurious. They're going to kill themselves if we don't do this, right? But they end up using it on anyone that they want to control in a certain way. A general use of these with behaviors that are not aggressive, not health dangerous, not destructive. For example, nagging, swearing, failing to maintain a neat appearance. I could get all three right now. I keep nagging about these issues of how we deal with children. Sometimes I friggin' swear about it. And the only reason I'm neat here is because I borrowed a shirt before I came on the camera. In other words, they, they use these devices on kids for behavior that is everywhere. Oh boy. They also discourage social interaction. They don't want social interaction. They want to just focus on punishing and controlling. 
They don't have sufficient academic services. Privacy and dignity is compromised, no kidding. And then they talk about collateral effects. And this is like, you know, dropping a bomb and you kill this person here, but you also kill four children. It's like what's happening in Iraq and Afghanistan every day. It's a shame and disgrace of our nation currently. But right there in Massachusetts, collateral effects is collateral damage in war, collateral effects here. It's called fear, anxiety, aggression. In other words, it makes things worse. Very sad. Shock, manual and mechanical restraints, helmets, contingent food or specialized food programs, often used at the same time with children. One student's behavior chart documented total inappropriate behaviors showed an increase from 800 per week during the first weeks after admission to an average of 12,000 per week. Whoa, that was helping a lot. Students wear their shock device for the majority of their sleeping and waking t hours, some during shower and bath time. So basically, they're just these controlled little beings carrying these shock devices strapped to their body virtually all the time. Not only that, it's not even like you got a human pushing a button when you're bad. It's automated. Listen to this. An additional form of electrical circuit circuitry is used to automatically administer a series of aversive skin shocks as soon as the behavior is initiated. Shocks are administered at regular intervals, one every three seconds. The shocks terminate when the behavior stops. The device is not operated by a staff person. Automated device. It gets worse. Skin shock and restraint are also used together when the behavioral rehearsal lesson is practiced on a student. The BRL is used when a student exhibits a behavior that's undesirable, but not real frequent. As described by a staff person, a student is restrained, shock is administered as a student is forcibly challenged to do what the procedure seeks to eliminate. In other words, you put the shock thing on them, you restrain them, then you force them to do the behavior that you want to eliminate so you can shock them. If they attempt to pull away, they get shocked. If they attempt to follow through, they get shocked at closer intervals. Do you get this? You know, all right, you're going to curse or you're going to pull your hair or whatever and we're going to shock you. No, I'm not. Okay, well, then we're going to shock you. Okay, I am. Well, then we're going to shock you more. And listen to this, the contingent food program. Widely applied, designed to use hunger to motivate students to be compliant. Requires that a student earn a portion of his daily prescribed calories by not engaging in a problem behavior. If a student passes each of the contracts, they get 100% of their food. If they don't, they don't get the food. The food is then discarded. If they don't earn the minimum total daily calories by 7 p.m., the balance is, is brought in the form of mashed potatoes sprinkled with liver powder. And that's not as bad as it gets. A specialized food program is even worse. Here, the Rotenberg Center does not offer makeup food. The child just goes to bed hungry. This is going on. 200 something thousand plus dollars a year for each child, paid for by the state. Professional mental health people running it and justifying it. Parents sending their children to this horror, hall of horrors, being used not only on the extreme cases, but on just swearing, cursing, being defiant, anything that is considered undesirable and one that you want to extinguish.
I mentioned one of the problems that they have in, in getting this place shut down is this, these adamant parents who want their child to be punished this way. There's a legislator in New Jersey, in uh, Massachusetts, who's really working hard to challenge this thing. And his name's Brian Joyce. But there's a place where the parents have reared their ugly head again. In this case, complicating matters is the fact that the Judge Roddenberg Center has a powerful ally in Representative Jeffrey Sanchez, whose nephew attends the school and has reportedly benefited from shock treatment. So they got a powerful legislator there. They get this thing through the Senate. This guy gets it killed in the House, and the place is able to continue. But the climate must be sufficient in this country to think that it's okay to severely punish and shock and restrain and repeatedly electroshock and repeatedly restrain and food deprive children who aren't acting the way you want them to act or else this place would be shut down. So just see this place going away. And if you're in that area, I want to send them a letter. Go to the motherjones.com website. Know that there's no depths to which people will not sink out of fear and desperation, out of frustration and anger, out of false ideas, out of a need for power and control. <laughs> Children deserve complete respect and to be treated with kindness. And if they're having a hard time, they may need extra resources, extra support. But that means talking to, that means being with, that means loving on, that means stopping from hurting themselves, but it does not mean systematically applying pain and systematically depriving needs being met. I see this place going down. There are over 350 videos on our channel and I doubt you've seen them all. And the topics range from weight loss, nutrition, sexual health, all the way to psychology and mind control and anywhere in between. And I think if you check them out, you're going to find some really interesting stuff.